Welcome to Nerd on Nerd with me, Ellie Kempster. And me, Liam Underwood. And in this episode, we are going to be talking about Spider-Gwen, Volume Zero, Most Wanted. Ooh. Exciting time. We haven't done a comic in a while, and we particularly haven't done a superhero comic in a while. So, And we've never done a Marvel comic, as far as we can tell. No. But now that's all going to change. Later. Hell yeah. First, it's catching up with Ellie and Liam. That's me. I have nothing to catch up with. Ellie, what have you been up to? Uh, I did London Pride, Liam. Okay, how was that? It was really good, yeah. Was it though? Because I heard like the news. <laughs> no, it was. The, so what Liam I think is referring to yeah. <laughs> is the fact that uh, at the front of London Pride's parade, a group of activists in uh, air quotes sort of marched. They, they forced their way to the front and insisted on being allowed into the parade, which the organisers said, no, you're not going to be part of the parade. But basically they were a, a group of anti-trans uh, radical feminists how does so, that work? Like, what's their stance? Basically, they think that trans women are just men who are making a choice and are ruining feminism by classic men becoming women. And look how ridiculous these men are. It's what? honestly the most stupid standpoint I can think of. It makes no sense to me. They're such a small minority of people, and yet they holler so loudly. Yeah. It's ridiculous. But, like, so I went and watched the parade... And was there for the beginning. And I saw them uh, and only realised that that was who I saw afterwards. Oh, okay. Because I missed, I, I think one, uh, like two of them had banners that were like very like anti-trans. Yeah. But one of them was holding one that just ha- said lesbian equals female homosexual. I saw that one. So I didn't, like I, I, I get now, now I know that they were uh, trans exclusionary radical feminists. I know. Oh, is that I, what, I get what stands saying. for? Yeah, I, I'm not going to call them that because uh, they tend to get offended. Uh, trans-exclusionary radical feminists claim that TERF is a slur, so I won't give them the ability to argue against me by claiming that I'm throwing slurs at them, so I, I won't if, call them that. If the shoe fits... It's not even a shoe. It's just an abbreviation of the yeah, word exactly. of, of what they are. They are trans-exclusionary yeah. radical feminists, but they don't like yeah, the yeah. word TERF. Yeah. Uh, so she was holding a banner that said... Homo- uh, lesbian equals female homosexual and so I didn't even realise they were uh, exactly well clearly after learning that they were trans exclusionary radical feminists yeah. uh, it clearly means that they're defining female in a very tight biological sense that only someone who is biologically female can be a lesbian okay so a trans woman who was into women yeah that sign is trying to say you aren't a lesbian because the whole their yeah. movement was called get the L out as in they want they don't want to be part of uh, the LGBT community anymore because they're being discriminated against by trans people. So shouldn't it be get the tea out? Uh, no, they tried that. There was a movement called Drop the Tea. Right. But most of the LGBT community doesn't give a shit about them. Yeah. So like everyone's just like, no, we're good. But the whole I mean the whole thing was stupid. The fact that I didn't realise they were trans exclusionary when they walked past me is sort of a bit of a sign that their whole protest was a little bit shit in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the point of trying to like get to the front of the sort of trans part like So so they're they're what they were trying to do yeah. is basically the official start of the Pride Parade in London is this big giant rainbow flag that comes past. Okay. Right, and uh the mayor of London was walking with that flag and like yeah. That's like the start of the parade. So what these this group had originally wanted was to be part of the parade, just yeah. somewhere in the parade. And uh, the like organisers turned around to him and said, no, your view is like super against what we stand for, so you can't be part of the parade. So then they... some The details are a bit fuzzy. I don't really understand how they were even allowed to march. I, basically, Pride have come out and said, well, what they did wasn't illegal, Yeah. so the police couldn't escort them out. Yeah. But we wouldn't let them march in the parade, so they forced their way to the front and lay down so that no one could march. Right. So then Pride went, fine, just walk, go. And then they delayed everyone else by 15 minutes. So that basically this group had to walk by themselves. Yeah. So they didn't look like they were part of the parade. And, I rem- and after I heard that, I was like, oh yeah, there was a weird gap between the first group yeah. and the rest of the parade. So it was, I don't know, it was just, their whole logic was, they think that, their little group is being discriminated against and that they should stand loud and proud and, you know, 
it's it's just so weird to me because it's such an exclusionary view. Yeah. Like, and there are people defending them, and it's just ridiculous. Okay, but you didn't really on the actual day itself. You didn't. Experience... I didn't even notice. Yeah, 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 no. yeah. So I had a fine time. So, to march in it, do you just show up, or is there like do you have to register or something? If you want to march in the actual parade, you have to register. So, so did, did you march in the actual parade? No. So I watched the parade. Uh, my company had a group marching in the parade. Yeah. Uh, but I'd left it a little bit late, replying to an email about wanting to do it. Standard. Uh, but then afterwards, I went and met up with them all because we they they were all hanging around, and I messaged one of them who I know like really well, and I yeah. was like, "Oh, I'm still around. Do you want to meet up for drinks?" Went and met up with all of them. And then they were like, oh, Ellie, you're, it's so good you're here. We didn't think you were going to come. And I was like, oh, no, I, I just left it too late to like join the actual parade. And then they were like, no, no, next year you're going to be part of it. Don't worry. And I was like, cool. Yeah. So I think next year, if we do it again, I'll be marching with them. So that'd be cool. That's cool. What did you wear? Just normal clothes. Oh, because like, I saw pictures from it and some of the outfits looked... Yeah, I, I, I had left it too late to organise like a proper pride outfit. But like I saw a picture of these of these um, guys that were just completely decked out in leather, and it was a oh, they hot marched, day. They marched in the parade. Yeah. It's so it there was, there a, was a, it was hot. there was a group there was a group called London Puppy Walk. Right. Which the best maybe the best moment of the day for me was uh, I was standing next to this uh, these two Mexican girls and these two guys that had randomly met up with them who were all just chatting. Yeah. And one of them was like, "Oh my God, puppies!" <laughs> and and the people that walked past were not walking puppies, Liam. They were men in full leather outfits with leather dog heads on. Right. Uh, so part of the, like, kink BDSM community. Yeah, 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 And the guy next to me just went, oh, no, I thought it was real puppies. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, this is the best thing ever. Yeah. This guy just <laughs> having his day ruined. So I, I saw, like, uh, some of the outfits were quite revealing as well. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. but... It's all just the whole thing is just an expression of it's just people who tradition who's you know traditionally had their views suppressed or were held back by yeah. the rest of society and it's a way for everyone to just go and be who they are. Yeah, yeah. and I think some of it like it's it's not necessarily being who you are, but it's like being sort of um, what is it like turned up to eleven almost like it's it's a day where you can just proper revel in all of but, that because some of the outfits you could not get away with wearing every day. No, 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 but that's what I mean. It's not them, It's but it, that's them being who they are without the restriction of, like, the reason people don't walk around in leather puppy outfits yeah. is because they would be judged, right? Probably, And yeah. these people clearly want to wear the leather puppy outfits because they're but wearing them. The, the, the thing that I don't get, right, like, is, is the practicality of it because it was so hot. Yeah, I think they, uh, most of comfortable. the floats walk, walk with water and shit so that they don't die. Yeah, it still isn't going to be comfortable in leather. I mean, the leather's quite revealing. Some of it. I saw some of the way it, it wasn't so much revealing, but it's like leather and chains and stuff. So it's it's going to be heavy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's, pri- it's pride. And that's... It's part of I it. I think you just do it. Yeah, You're yeah. just like, how you... I saw... There was a, we, one of the guys who we saw afterwards. He wasn't with us, but he just sort of tagged along. Yeah. And he was wearing this, like, amazing winged silver suit. Yeah. And ridiculously high heels. And yeah. everyone was like, dude, take your shoes off. Like, you're not in the parade anymore. It's fine. And he was like, I am scared that if I take my shoes off, they will just, like, be crippled. Yeah. And they were. He then took them off and he was just like, oh, yeah, I'm bleeding a lot. So he'd walked this entire, like, parade with painful feet. Yeah. But because it was, like, you know, an expression of yeah, yeah, yeah. love. and I kind know. of always picture pride. Just I don't know why. I just picture it ending in this huge, like, orgy. It doesn't. What it does end in is everyone going to Soho in London and Soho just gets packed with people. Yeah. It's amazing. Like, I don't think I've, apart from maybe like festivals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never, and that's not in streets. But you don't handle crowds particularly well. So how did you find? I don't know. It was different because. It's such a like atmosphere, I guess. Yeah, I think because it's all part of it and because people aren't being dicks. Like, the reason yeah. I hate crowds is when people are, like, shoving you and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's not really how... Ha- like, it probably does happen. Like, you know. Yeah. It's any crowd, but it just doesn't feel like it's happening. Yeah. I don't know. But no You can get past people. And most people are there and just cool with strangers and just being like, oh, yeah, yeah cool. Yeah, come through or whatever. I don't know. But I guess it is part of that, like, because you're all part of these, like, different minorities but still minorities, it's very much, like, I would imagine... 
just this friendly kind of atmosphere of like we're all in this together sort yeah of. exactly yeah 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 but i don't get why it didn't end in an orgy it just doesn't i just thought like, it would. i mean i mean there are probably areas that end in orgies that's where you need to go next year then i'm all right go. i don't need to be in like, an orgy. can i have directions you find someone in the, the in the massive hills and you're just like point me to the orgy area please hey where's the orgy <laughs> that'd be great because then then all right, Liam. we'd have an amazing catching up with I don't want to be in an orgy. I mean, why? Because I'm. I don't want to be in an orgy. Yeah, but why is that? I just don't want to. But think about how good a story it will be for the podcast. There's <laughs> such a bad reason to do it. Mm, maybe. Oh, Liv, what did you do with your three weeks? Fuck all. Oh, nothing. So you haven't got a story for the catching uh, no, up with. But I didn't so go, don't try and get I me if to I'd have gone You to should have come like to Pride, Pride and had an orgy. Yeah, I should have. But I don't think Kat would have liked that. She wouldn't. It would have been very confusing for yeah. her. Yeah. Should have, should have been livid. I imagine. Yeah. Um, anything else about Pride? No, I think that's all Does the Pride. Does Pride stand for anything? No, it's about being proud. <laughs> uh, it stands for know. penises, uh, ridges. <laughs> intersect, that's one. Dicks. Well, you... When you said intersect, were you vaguely thinking of intersex, which is under the LGBT <laughs> umbrella? Yeah. Or were you just saying the word intersect? No, I was thinking of intersex. Yep, cool, got you. Um, what's the E stand for, though? It, do- it doesn't. Estrogen. There you go, perfect. That's pride. Sorted. Uh, what else have you been up to? Uh, went and watched the World Cup final today, Liam. At a house party. Football. I mean, I care so little about this that I'm just going to let yeah, you talk. Same. I have no questions. No, it's cool. France won. Well done. Sorted. Let's move on. Uh, well, you, no, you, you were getting into the football this this year, I thought. Only because I built that predictor of the scores. Was that it? Yeah, that was the only reason, yeah. Because oh. I was fascinated by how well it would do. Did it did it? well in the early stages, but failed later on. I didn't adapt the code to account for two really good teams playing against each other. Silly me. Whoops. Did you, like, put Four years from on? now, I'll build a better one. In two years, you could do the Euros. Nah, I don't give a shit about the Euros. No one does. Oh, I, I like at my family barbecue went this weekend. They are like, oh yeah... The Euros. That's the next. Oh, family thing. barbecue. It's boring. That sounds like something. Yeah, it was, no. To so be fair, it wasn't boring. That's wrong. It was just uneventful. Like there was no drama. Nothing went wrong. Oh, there must have been some drama. No. Nah. You were there. Yeah. No I drama. imagine you're just like a constant thorn in the side of your family. Yeah. But <laughs> they've just got used to it now. Let's deal with it. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was really mean. No, uh, that, that's that's fine. <laughs> um, uh, I have been playing a lot of Bloodborne. Oh yeah, I mean yeah. Is that we haven't, we haven't really done it on housekeeping? That. It's not a housekeeping thing, is it? Because we no, we've never like. Oh, but it. it is a review. I haven't finished it yet, so I can't review it yet. Liam, uh, listeners, Liam a while ago got Bloodborne while me and Dan Palmer were we, playing actually, it. Actually, we did discuss it ages and ages and ages ago when I first got it and didn't really like it. Like we're talking like when we were in single digit episodes, I think. Okay, so so old school listeners will remember that Liam didn't like Bloodborne. He's uh, suddenly decided that he does. I don't like it. You did. There was a moment in time where you did like it. Episode 13, we discussed it with Dan Palmer. Fair enough. See, I'm making logs. Oh, look at you. Um, uh, yeah, Liam's now gone back and decided to complete it. Yeah, I don't. I, I think it's because we were having a big discussion about how I couldn't fairly judge it because I hadn't given it enough of a chance. So yes. I was just like, fuck you both. I'm going to go and complete it so I can fairly judge it. Have you completed it yet? No. So you can't judge it yet? Not yet. No. But, um... It's not good. Moving on. But at least you'll have actual reasons for not liking it, as opposed to just, I don't... I don't get... I don't know. Yeah, no, Your original uh, yeah. reasons for not liking it were not good. They're still valid. <laughs> no, they are, but but they were they were founded on, like, the first part of the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which now, is such now an unfair way to judge a game. game. Yeah. And that's so much fairer. Like, if you don't like it now, I can't. Like, I can't just turn around and be like, "Yeah, but you haven't played so much of this game." Yeah. Th- that I mean, I have about... technically completed the game. Like, I've seen You're just two doing of the, the last, endings. Like... Yeah. There's a third You're secret just doing ending the secret and one. another trophy that I'm doing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's not all I've been doing really. I've watched a few films. But we'll get to that, no doubt. We're now little tally. Um, film reviews. No. This what? How dare you? What? What, what? what were you about to say? Film reviews? Yeah, because that's what I've been doing. Right. What, what am I missing? You're not saying the piece. No, that's what you say. Now it's time for everyone's favourite part of the show, catching up with... 
Liam right. and Nick. No. Whoa. Whoa. Really I, my brain, I said it, and then I yeah. stopped, and my brain just was like, something's not right here. There was like two yeah. cogs just not clicking. Yeah, yeah. And it, now it's catching time up with every... is no one's favourite part of the show. It's my favourite part of the show. Now it's time for Liam's favourite part of the show. Liam and Ellie have done things in the last time since they've recorded an episode. Here's a review of the things that they did during the period of time between the two episodes. Spoiler free review. Spoiler free reviews. Yeah. Liam. Yes. You've got too many things to review. Go on. Once we've caught up with YouTube, it's going to be fine because I can do bonus episodes and stuff. Yeah, it's your own fucking fault. I know. Whatever, just tell me Tell me them. What are these reviews? Um, so, regular listeners might remember the last time I finished Parenthood. Yeah, and you were so, looking for a new show? Yeah, well, we we watched season two of Riverdale. Which, you liked the first season of Riverdale. I loved the first Friday. season, right? It's like, the way I describe it to people that haven't really seen it, is it's it's all of the teen shows that you love, like Dawson's Creek and The O.C. and One Tree Hill... All that you just stuff. named a bunch of shows that I don't like. Yeah, all that stuff. <laughs> Carry on. With a bit of Twin Peaks added in, and then just the ridiculousness of it all just cranked up to 11, where, like, it, it, like what Dawson's Creek would have, like, an entire like half-season story arc covering, Riverdale would do in about three episodes. Fair enough. Like, the first episode opens with Archie having an affair with one of his teachers, which was, like, a Jesus. big part of the first season of Dawson's Creek, and then Riverdale... It's dealt with surprisingly quickly and efficiently, <laughs> but it's just it's ridiculous. Like the stuff that it goes through, like children setting their parents on fire. Yeah, like it's it's insane. It's it's like your typical teenage drama. Like oh, I like this person, but they like this person, and then with like, a bit this... of parent burning thrown in. Yeah, and it's like murder mystery stuff. And the fuck, it's it's. I would recommend it because. To be fair, it's been on my list of like to watch stuff for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't think season two was as good as season one, personally. Um, mm-hmm. Why not? So season one ends on this like cliffhanger that I don't want to talk about because it might be a bit yeah. spoilery. But season two is then dealing with the after effects of that, and particularly so like the main character is a guy called Archie, and it's his. Uh, they do that thing they sometimes do in sequels where you have like the the good guy, but they sort of take him down a, a dark path. Yeah, and. Like I wouldn't mind if that was like a, just a part of the season, but they really do drag it on for the majority of the season. And that, does that, he do a Spider Man three? Basically, yeah. Fun. And it's just it's all a bit silly. Um, then the, my other like character that I love is is a guy called Jughead Jones. Oh, characters have ridiculous names in this, by the way. Yeah, that's just something that you need to know. Um, and yeah, Juggy has this weird storyline that I wasn't like a huge fan of, and. I don't know, there wasn't enough of, like, the teenage angst that I like. It was more focused on the silliness. There was, though, there was a Halloween episode that was fantastic, which had um, Tony Todd, who played Candyman in it. Oh, okay. That was good. And there was also a musical episode where they're putting on a musical version of Carrie, but the songs are all, like, applying to what the characters are also going through. Yeah. And the, the, the music wasn't great. That's never good. No. I, I loved the idea of the episode, and I was so excited for the episode, but it didn't really nail Work. it. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, but it, it was a perfectly enjoyable show, and it, because it is so silly, it's really bingy. So we got through it quite quickly. Uh, three and a half out of five. Fair enough. Um, I went to cinema. So I went to a Cineworld Unlimited secret screening. Ooh. Where they don't tell you what it is until you get there. And That's such a weird concept to me. Why? Because it's just very odd. Because you could just go and see shit. Yeah. But that's the whole like mystery of it. Is is it going to be something good or bad? Have but, you ever done one where it was just something appalling? It wasn't appalling, but we did Molly's Game, which wasn't great. It was very average. Oh, I remember you talking about that, actually. Yeah. yeah. Go on. Uh, yeah, sorry. So what this was, one was what did you see? Um, Incredibles 2, which Ooh, everyone nice. was really excited about. But I really wanted it to be Skyscraper. So I was a bit like, nah, I don't care. If you got to see Incredibles two, yeah, I know, but it's and the good thing is I got to see Incredibles two. Like I, I probably wouldn't have gone to the cinema to see it otherwise because it would have been full of kids. Oh, okay, yeah. So yeah. I would have waited for it to come out to come out on like home media. Um, so I did get to see it with like adults, which was good. Um, the first Incredibles is fine. I'm not like a huge fan of it, but it's fine. It's a great movie. But this one on. is, I think, slightly better. Um, so the first one's called The Incredibles, and this one is called Incredibles two. And I don't understand why it's not The Incredibles 2. Yeah. 
That bothers me. Um, Craig T. Nelson, who's in Parenthood, does the voice of the dad in The Incredibles and Incredibles cool. 2. Uh, if you like the first one, I think you'll like this one. It's it's like a logical continuation of that story. Um, yeah, doesn't it pick up like... Uh... I heard four seconds after the last one ends, this film starts. Oh, I, d- I don't know. I, don't, I thought I, th- okay. I thought there was a bit of time between the, the two. Oh, fair enough. Maybe. I think. Um, I, I think I just heard that somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, like, the animation's amazing. Like, Pixar, you just can't yep. really fault their animation. Um, the action scenes, really good. The rest, it's just it's all right. It's all right. So, it's, it's a three out of five. Fair enough. Um, Moody shit. What? Nothing. Carry on. Then I saw another unlimited screen in because we haven't recorded in ages. Uh, Hotel Artemis. This film, I saw the trailer ages ago. Yeah. It looks like the kind of film that, I don't know, I don't want to say mindless action because I think it's trying to be more than mindless. But yeah. I think it's probably the kind of film that you go and see and you're like, ah, the story's not actually that great. They think they've got a good story. They haven't, but the action's kind of cool in it. It's not really an action film. Is it not? No. Ooh, okay. Um, so the basic premise, for anyone that doesn't know, it's set in the near future. I think it's like 2028 or something. Um, Donald Trump is now president of the world. Obviously. Well, you know, it's not unbelievable. Uh, there's a riot breaking out because a company has basically figured out a way of like taxing water or something like that okay uh there's there's issues with people accessing water and right. it's causing this huge riot there's this hotel which is kind of for gangsters so you have to yep. have certain permissions to get into it it has certain rules and in the hotel they it's like a nurse that fixes people up and it's this one night where there's big riots going on and all the different personalities that are there and someone has accidentally stolen a load of money and they end up at the hotel and blah blah blah. Uh, it's got Jeff Goldblum in it. He was the highlight. Not in it enough. Not enough. Uh, Sterling K. Brown's in it. He was really good. Jodie Foster was fine and Dave Bautista is good. Yeah. But it is just it was quite an average film really. Like it was it was ninety minutes. It didn't really just, like feel boring at any stage. But it equally, isn't the sort of film that you're like, wow, I'm going to be thinking about that for ages. It was just yeah yeah. Just passes an hour and a half if you've got nothing better to do. Fair enough. Three out of five. So far, we're on a run of sort of threes and three point fives. Yeah, we're not going to break that with the next one, but the next one would be my movie of the week if I did movie of the week. Uh, I went to see Adrift. Which one's Adrift? It's the one where you've got Shailene Woodley and Sam Claflin. Claflin? Claflin? Um, they're on a boat and a storm's happened and they're now adrift in the ocean. Oh, I don't know if I. I don't know. I don't know if I've seen anything about it or not. Um, it's based on a true story. Okay. Um, based on them, they they basically have to. He smashes his ribs in the storm and messes his leg up, so she kind of has to look up, look after him, and also she's not really much of a sailor. She also has to navigate how to get to Hawaii or somewhere. Got you. They've got the option of either going to I think Japan or Hawaii, and Hawaii's closer. But it's a much smaller target that's going to be a lot easier to miss. Yeah. So, I I like these sort of true life kind of in the face of peril type stories. Mm-hmm. Uh, things like um, Everest, I would compare it to, which I quite liked. Um, it got me, is the thing. I, I can't say what happens, but a thing happens, and I should have seen it coming. I didn't see it coming, and I was like, ah, uh, you got me. Oh, okay. That's unusual for you. Yeah. It had some really nice sunsets as well, which was good. Oh, good. <laughs> exactly what I go for in these films. I go, you know what? I really hope there's some good sunsets. Yeah, the, 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 the thing that's weird about it, even though like the majority of the film is this woman on a boat struggling, it made me kind of want to travel a bit more. Okay. And I, I hate boats and I hate sailing. We've established this in the past. Yeah. But it did make me be like, oh, I'd love to go to like, you know, somewhere hot where there's like a little harbour and I could just drink like pina coladas on a beach in a hammock. It's weird that this has brought this out on you. Yeah, I know. It's not weird because I don't like that kind of stuff because I think that stuff's awesome and I've always wanted to do shit like that. 
It's the fact yeah. that I know you're usually anti this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like she, she. So the, the story is this, this girl left her home, and the goal was to just travel for like six months, and she's been travelling for like five years with no intention of ever returning home. And she shows up in this place, and they're just like, "What, what, what address you stay in?" And she's like, "I figure it out." They're like, "What about employment?" She's like, "I'm just making enough money to get to the next place." And yeah. That kind of like I don't know that mentality I thought was quite interesting and quite like enticing. You would not survive oh, if I, you did that. I wouldn't. No, I would You'd be dead mugged. in minutes. Yeah, I'd get mugged and then sunburned and then I'd just be lying on a beach just crying. <laughs> Could not able to. You're so severely sunburned that you can't move. Yeah, I'm just like rolling in the sand the trying to bury myself. And then you get eaten by hungry crabs. Yeah. Uh, what did you give the film, Liam? Three and a half out of five. Oh, okay. But it, it was good. Like I, I'd seen a few, like quite a bit of negative stuff about it on, on social media, and I, I really enjoyed it. The, the like, what was the, was the negative stuff just like this isn't a good film? Or was yeah, it... it was a bit boring. Blah blah blah. And I don't know if it's the sort of thing where maybe if you're familiar with the true story it's based on, so you know how it ends, maybe that lessens the impact. Yeah, I always wonder with that, but I also wonder with those as well, like how true to the story. Yeah. Because the moment something says based on a true story, I'm like. Yeah. I mean, I would say, is... to me, it feels like it's probably quite closely based because there's nothing massively outrageous that happens in it that you're like... Yeah, they're just oh, trying to get stretch. to Hawaii. Yeah. And I guess, like, you, knowing that it's based on a true story, you kind of have to go into it knowing to an extent how it's going to end because otherwise you wouldn't know how to tell this story. Yes, exactly, yeah, yeah. So, I'm assuming they survive. Otherwise, someone has just made. So basically, the, it's based on a true story. A boat yeah. went missing, so it, we just it, got to do whatever the fuck we wanted. Yeah, it's it's. It, it, they were adrift for forty-one days at sea, which to me is just like I can't even comprehend that. That must be terrifying. Like imagine. It's bad that my my immediate instinct was to go. That's not very long, and then I thought about it, and I was like, that is quite long. That's all. But imagine not only that, right? Imagine going 41 days on the ocean, just not seeing land that entire time. Yeah, that's spooky. Like, I don't know. I hate sailing, but this just got me kind of wanting to travel for some reason. It's so weird that a disaster film has got you wanting to travel. Yeah, it is. Well, jeez. Okay, fair enough. Um, But yeah, no, I I did enjoy it. Three and a half out of five. Uh, I I would recommend, if you see one film, I mean, everyone's going to go see Incredibles 2. Go see Adrift. I saw some other Fair stuff, right. but I'll talk about it next time. Yeah. America has got Ant-Man and the Wasp, and we still aren't getting that for like another two weeks, I think. Yeah, I know. I started seeing like tweets already today, and I was like, fuck sake. Yeah. And also, because uh, I was like, well, it's not that big of a deal, because apparently the event's taking place before Infinity War, so it's not like it's going to spoil yeah. anything leading up. But apparently it does deal with Infinity War stuff. Oh, okay. Fair That's enough. as much as I've read. I was like, oh, I'm not reading any more of that, but... Yeah, I think the only thing I saw was uh, a YouTube group that I follow had have done a, a film review of it, and the title of it was, This is the One You Can Skip, so... Oh, okay. I don't know. Not glowing. I think that might just be them being like, this film shit, but I also don't want to watch it, because they do spoilers in their film yeah. reviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was They're not like us. Us. We're considerate to our audience. Well, I mean... They specifically say this is full of spoilers. Don't watch a bit like our culture swaps. Yeah, yeah, which yeah, yeah. We do. Yeah. So, um, housekeeping. No, Liam. No, because you've done stuff. Ellie has also done stuff, and here's the spoiler-free reviews of the things that she has done. This is unusual. It is. I'm usually unprepared. It's not what everyone's hoping for. I'm not about to review American Psycho and get that out of the way. How's that going? Ugh, I opened it the other day. Well done. I didn't read any pages. I opened it. I looked at the percentage just to check where I was. And I went, oh my God, I've still got 25% of this book to read. And then closed That's it. not a lot though. Oh, I can't bring myself How to How many pages it. is 25%? It's not like a lot. Because it's got to be, it's, it, the book can't be more than like 200, 250 pages. What I need to do is I need to book a week off from work. And then I need to go and live in the woods for a week with just American Psycho. Because then eventually I will get so bored that the only option I have is to finish American Psycho. I think out of just stubbornness, you wouldn't. You'd be like, look, I know that, this is what I'm true. here to do, and I'm not going to do it. I'd like play. I'd make pine cone dolls and play yeah. with them. It, yeah. it would end up like the the surrounding area of your little like hut would just look like the Blair Witch. You've got these little like <laughs> built... stick figure people that you're hanging up. <laughs> to be fair, that does sound quite fun. So yeah, that probably would. Liam. Yeah. This week I saw Shin Godzilla. Oh, okay. Tell me more about that. It's a really good movie about Godzilla. Okay. 
How does it compare to the American Godzilla? Not good. Wait, this one's not good. I've confused myself, Liam. Yeah. I've confused myself because there's been a day in between. Listeners won't have heard because <laughs> I'll have edited it so smoothly. Yeah. But listeners are going to be they're going to be unaware of the fact that what happened at that exact moment in time is uh, your audacity froze. Yeah. We lost an hour of recording. Yeah. This is 23 hours in the future. Yeah. I've now got. A, I've already said all the stuff I want to say about Shin Godzilla, but no one will hear it because it's just sort of. No. So I've just got say the audio, it all again. But just me. Just be professional. Say it all again. Easy. Shin Godzilla is a good movie. Yeah. I can see why people wouldn't like it. Why is that? Uh, some of the graphics are kind of dodgy. They don't look amazing. And I think that would put people off. I think. How also, dodgy are we talking? You should, uh, in your spare time, and listeners at home, you can do this as well, uh, Google Shin Godzilla and look at the uh, Google image results. And there's a specific one that is like of a young baby Godzilla. Right. And it looks ridiculous. But in, in, like in what way? So picture Godzilla. Yeah, big old green thing. Yeah. Kind of kind of cool. Like a T-Rex, but say. overweight. Or like the, well, not really, but sh- sure. I mean, it doesn't stand the same, whatever. A fat old T Rex. A baby version of that, right? Yeah. Should sort of look like a kind of intimidating, maybe a bit smaller monster. Yeah. What it ends up looking like in this is a weird. It's it's got two legs. Yeah. It's got no arms. Yeah. It's got like two maybe little nubble things that aren't arms. Yeah. It moves around on its belly, pushing itself around. Okay. And its eyes. You know when you see a dead fish. Yeah. And they're just sitting there, and both yeah. their eyes are looking in two different directions. Yeah. And they're just... It's got those eyes. Dead fish eyes. Big, big, wide, looking outwards eyes. Okay. And this was and all just, CGI, it, was it? Yeah, yeah, all yeah. CGI, yeah. So, that bit, not ideal. No. Because I, I, I don't mind it. It's not going to ruin the film for me, but it was like a thing that I was like, oh, people that give a shit about CGI are going to come in here and be like, the fuck is this? Yeah, but I guess, right, we have... When you're talk, when you're like considering this, if for anything, the fact that the film is so good that you can overlook that sort of glaring issue is yeah. just kind of testament to how good the film is on a narrative level. Uh, no, the narrative is not. So why did you know, like it, the film then? Because I love Godzilla and kaiju movies. So you're just biased. Everyone's biased. No, but I mean like you're biased to this type of movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's so much like you're biased towards like coming of age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's kind like, of... like I've always said. Like I love Pacific Rim. I, I need to see Pacific Rim too. I can't believe I still haven't seen it. Yeah. But like I think Pacific Rim is a great movie because I went in being like I'm going to watch giant monsters fight giant robots yeah, and yeah. that's what I want. But I think it, when you're like reviewing something like that, it is important to include that bias in it. So when people are listening, they kind of know where you're coming from. Sure. Like like thanks. If 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 I do like a kind of age movie, I'm always like, oh right, so I bum these type of movies anyway. So I'm obviously gonna. I don't think that's a direct quote. I don't think I've ever heard you say that. Have you not? I don't think you've ever... No, I don't think you've ever been... <laughs> to be this, this sort of reasonable ideal you have of yourself. Where you're like, hey, guys, I know I'm biased to this movie, so I'm just, you know, take everything I say with a grain of salt. You're just like, this film is the best film. The funny thing is, most of the coming of age films that I am biased towards, I'm then like, I don't really like it that much. It's got a female protagonist, not a fan. <laughs> yeah, you're kind of sexist. Um, Nothing wrong with being sexy. I didn't... I didn't say sexy. Uh, so the the other thing this film has that's kind of... yeah. So like I was saying, the narrative, right? Yeah. It, it's a weird version of the story in the, in the sort of Americanized Godzilla films, they're telling the story of like either one person or a group of people sort of surviving in Godzilla attack. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, in this film, it has got a guy who's like the main sort of guy. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. But it's more telling the story of how Japan as a whole is dealing with the Godzilla attack. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of kind of weird, I don't know, difference to the American films. It's kind of interesting. Uh, it also definitely plays into the whole, like, um, that stuff people got from the original Godzilla films, where there's that big, like, tie into the nuclear Nuc- weapons yeah, that were launched yeah, yeah. against Japan. Because that was very like, that reactionary huge, to that. Yeah, and this definitely has that theme in it. Um, so this is something else that we've discussed in the past, about how you're kind of, you don't like reading too deeply into movies. No, so I try not to, yeah. but it is unavoidable in this film. It's so... In your face. Yeah, and it's sort of... It definitely feels like it's very much them saying, hey, 
remember when America nuked Japan. But this is kind of um, partly what I find interesting about this sort of thing is because I guess you you know what they're saying, right? Because you know the backstory there. Yeah. And I guess like there's probably other films that we've spoken about where neither of us maybe have known the allegorical backstory there. So we probably missed out on a load of stuff. But it could have really changed the way we maybe interpreted the film if we hadn't known that. But I mean, so this doesn't... So I think this is where that my like side of that argument comes in, which is like, while that is definitely a theme in this film and you can see it, yeah, it doesn't impact the movie. Like, I didn't leave the movie at the end being like, holy shit, Hiroshima, my God. It's so bad. Because, you know, it, I mean, it was so bad. Yeah. Let's just very quickly clarify that. It's one of the most horrible events in history. Like, I wasn't trying to downplay it. Yeah, but, yeah. I, like, while it's definitely part of the film, it's not like, it's not changing the film. Do you know what I mean? Like is it as in as in t- in terms of like I didn't leave it being like I rate this Godzilla film because higher or lower based on Japan's history issues with America. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that is that how you describe nuclear weapons? That issue they had. Yeah. You you remember Liam that little issue they had where uh, <laughs> America bombed them with very big nuclear weapons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That just tiny little. <laughs> yeah, that little snafu. On the history of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do you know what I mean? Like, so I get what you're saying because it it can impact a film and for people that like you know someone like Jason yeah who very clearly is looking at films with like a thematic mind and like looking for he's smart sort of... let's just you know let's say it yeah. like it is for he's... smart people yeah it probably does change the film for for, <laughs> for regular dum-dums. Joes like me and you well for the dum-dums yeah for you the dum-dum oh right yeah me yeah yeah <laughs> what film have you what's that film you saw Liam a Texas Vibrator Massacre was it or yeah and I'm the dum dum. Yeah. Why would cool. you pull like out of all of the movies that I've seen? Why would you go to Texas Vibrator Massacre as the one that's like this is a dum dum film? That... Oh, sorry, was it a smart film? Name? I think there's a level of ingenuity to it. Maybe we can do it for a culture sw- culture swap one day, and then we'll both discuss it and it's, learn. It's such a vile movie. <laughs> I can imagine. Oh, I don't really want to watch it. No. Um, but you know what we will do on a culture swap scene because I've ordered it. I do know, because remember, Liam, we, we had this discussion 23 hours ago. Have we already covered it? Yeah, yeah, you definitely told me. But was it in the recording that survived or the recording that we lost? Oh, uh, it, probably in the lost recordings, the lost episode. There we go. So you have to forget all of that stuff that I've told you. Oh, no, no, no. I'm definitely, every time you mention something we've already mentioned, I'm going to be, I'm going to bring it up. Well, then the spider Gwen conversation is going to be difficult. It's going to be real awkward. Um, yeah, I ordered Barefoot again on Blu-ray. So, and I... I want us to watch it soon on a culture swap because that then opens up us doing other anime because I've kind of put a gate on that until we do Barefoot again. Yeah. So maybe... Mm, Episode after next. Yeah, maybe if, it, if it's arrived. I mean, it's estimated to arrive at like the start of August and the way we're currently going with episodes where we're like squeezing out one a month, it, it might be here in time. We're getting to a month. They're just happening at weird times in the month. Oh, okay. We're a bit like a pregnant lady. Are we? With periods. They, I don't, no, wait, pregnant ladies, do they still get periods even though they're, when they're pregnant? Cause I don't no, think no, 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 they're very works. delayed. They're constantly delayed. And then a baby like falls episodes, out. And then one day they discover they're pregnant. Yeah, we're at the stage where... We're like a phantom pregnancy. Yeah, this is nerd on nerd. Colon, phantom pregnancy. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> I give Godzilla, Shin Godzilla, four out of five. Excellent. Have you discussed all of the things that we previously discussed that are lost? Nah, I think I said something about the lady who does an American accent yeah, poorly last did. time. Yeah, you did. Don't worry no, about oh, it. Oh, that no, was good, because cool. you said that no. that was an issue. Well, no, I, I didn't say it was an issue, actually, Liam. I said <laughs> that it was, I believe my exact words yeah. were, it didn't take me out of the movie. Yeah. But I could see, again, it's another one of those things where I imagine if you weren't enjoying the film... Yeah. It would just help to further take you out of it. Where there's a lady who's playing the, the assistant. No, she's the assistant to the ambassador from America. Okay. She her character is meant to be half Japanese, half American, but raised in America. Uh, but when she speaks English, it is with a heavy Japanese accent. And can you do like a sample? No, Liam, I can't. Listeners, go Google Shin Godzilla again. <laughs> this time, look for YouTube clips of <laughs> what, the ambassador. What should they be assistant. searching? No, Lim. Anyway. Four out of five. Let's move on. Housekeeping. Housekeeping. I've kept the house. Liam's going to make a funny joke, listeners. It's weird that I know that. Wait, what joke am I making? 
go, go on, just do this whole bit, and then I'll tell you if that was the same joke you made last time or not. Um, Keep going. You kept house. Come on. Don't worry about it. Don't overthink it, Liam. What was it? Listeners, I've broken Liam. Yeah, can you oh, do apologize. the joke for me? No, 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 no. Just say this bit. Go on. Uh, keep keep my house. Housekeep. Woo, it's housekeeping. It's housekeeping. Okay. I, what? You've really thrown me now because I'm like, what am I supposed to be saying? I forgot. You're not to supposed say. to say anything, Liam. You told me to forget the last 23 hours. Just remind me what I said last time. No, it's cool. Do housekeeping. We had a tweet. Is that right? Who, who tweeted us? Corey. Sure, go on. Corey tweeted us saying, listening to episode 50... Wait, do you remember Corey? Uh, yeah, isn't Corey that guy that used to listen to us ages ago? Yeah, um, he stopped listening to us, but I found him Did you, like, Twitter. hunt him down? Yeah, I did. No, okay, so let me just, for the listeners who obviously didn't hear this discussion that we previously had... Yeah, go on. Um, I was editing an older episode, as I'm known to do at the moment. <laughs> yeah, so that's all Liam does. It's, all my, it's just my entire life right now. He does that and fucks up Audacity so that he can't record an hour of an episode. And I masturbate. And he masturbates. Frequently and with vigour. Oh, good. Um, So, yeah. And I was like, oh, I remember Corey. He used to tweet us every now and again. I wonder what he's up to. And I typed in his Twitter handle and it no longer existed. And I was like, oh, shit. I hope he's not dead. So, I did some, like, sleuthing. Internet sleuthing. And I, I tracked him down. And I just... Right, Okay. Now, when we were discussing this yesterday, I think that you made me sound like I was this kind of, like, creepy stalker. Yeah. And I just want to... I'm, I'm going to... I didn't even message. I just followed back. I, I followed him, and he sent us a message saying, Hi, Liam and Ellie. It's been a while, uh, and I'm now catching up on all that's been happening. Lots, I see. So, all it took was me to follow... And then we've got a tweet saying, listening to episode 57 of Nerd on Nerd with Liam Underwood and Ellie. Hope you haven't had any more vehicle accidents since the recording of this episode. Which I haven't. There you go. Um, what was the joke that I'm missing? <laughs> I've made you so paranoid about the joke. Uh, no, Liam, it's kind of... So just run through that, that whole thing you said where you're like, all I did was, you know, find him and follow him, right? Yeah. Just like, it's almost like someone going into witness protection. Like he changed his Twitter handle. Yeah. He vanished yeah. into the ether. And then you hunted him down. Yeah. And then all you did was creepily follow him. Like, he was probably like, I don't really want to listen to Nerd on Nerd oh, anymore. 100% that's what happened. I'm over it. And then you were like, I'm back. <laughs> listen to us. Just sort of like, my head just pops up at his kitchen window. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and now we've got some extra listens. So, uh, Amanda hasn't tweeted us this week. So, um, when I edit this one for YouTube, if she hasn't tweeted us between now and then, I'm going to hunt her down too. There's the joke, Liam. I did it. I remembered it, and I did it. Yes. You did it. Uh, Liam. Yeah. As everyone on the show... I don't know why I'm opening the Google spreadsheet. Well, I haven't finished, I already... I, we've got my email that I need to read. What email? Important. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. And then I shout at you, and I say, Liam, stop reading spam emails. It's not spam. It's from Amazon. AWS Europe launched on the 1st of July. Yeah. Impact sure yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I say, why didn't you tell me this off-air? Because it's important. Yeah, uh, uh, Greetings. He's now saving it for the show. Greetings from Amazon Web Services. As mentioned in yeah, previous don't... communication, your account... It's a long number. I think this might be spam. Don't read it out, because it's not. It's the Amazon account we have. Oh, right. Do, why do we have an Amazon account? Uh, from ages ago. Okay. Like, years ago. Oh. So it's all right. I'll deal with it. Okay. But you said that yesterday, and it's still not dealt with. Oh, yeah, with that. Something happened uh, yesterday, <laughs> about 20... 22 and a half hours ago oh, right. where I just really didn't feel like doing any more work fair enough um, <laughs> Liam yes as regular listeners of the show know uh huh you have a stack of DVDs yeah it's a big old stack it's got thousands and thousands of DVDs in it yeah uh, last time I did the number it was 1101 yeah how's that going um... oh also listeners Anyone who isn't a regular listener, Liam's goal is to get that number down to 1,091 by the end of the year, which I know you're thinking to yourselves, that's not that many films. He has made very little progress this year, so he's not oh, on but track. I have watched a lot of films. Yeah, you just haven't lowered the number in the stack. No, and, and there isn't a forthcoming problem, I will admit that. I'll confess yeah. to that, if, if you will. Um, yeah, good. I, bloody Criterion had another 50% off Barnes and... Barnes and Noble sale, didn't they? 
It's not their fault. Well, yeah, because I've brought ten. Yeah, but that's not their fault. That's your fault. What, how am I to blame for this? You, you have the shopping addiction. I exhibited great restraint in only buying ten. That's not great restraint. God, it is. Uh, what was the number yesterday? Anyway, oh. one th- uh, 1,101. Yeah, what was the number when we recorded yesterday? Oh, 1,101. It's 1,102. It went up one. Yep. In in the 22 hours between us recording and now, it has gone up one. Yep. <laughs> How? Uh, Amazon order arrived this morning. Oh my god, Liam. Yeah. I didn't even open the sheet because I just assumed that there was no way it could have changed in a day. How wrong I was. Right, and this is an important lesson that I want you, Ellie, I want you to learn this. I want our listeners to learn this, okay? Everyone, buckle up. Life moves pretty fast. And if you don't stop and look around once in a while, you might miss it. Thanks. But what film is that from? I've got no idea. I wasn't really listening. I'm busy opening the spreadsheet. Well, now who's not prepared? Well, I I didn't think it would have changed anyway. Have you met me? Oh yeah, true. This is why it's such a problem. It's ridiculous. It's honestly insane. I can't remember what my forfeit is if I don't get it down. What's my reward uh, if I... I get to pick... I get to go through the pile and pick the next five films you have to watch, I think it was. And what's my reward if I do get it down? Uh, I will go back and check. I can't remember. I'm that positive that you won't get it down. It was something like you were going to buy me a film or something, I think. Yeah, possibly. It was something ridiculous like that. Which ultimately doesn't really help the whole point of this endeavour. Yeah, exactly. So you should want to... Oh, no, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Um, that's it for housekeeping. There's no one that's tweeting us or yep. emailing us. Are they Facebooking us? Like, you know what they, they might have done that I haven't actually checked in a while? iTunes reviews? They might have left a little cheeky review on iTunes. I doubt it. I'm going to assume no. You should check anyway. I'm checking live as we record... As we How exciting. re-record. So, so not live? No. None. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Fair enough. Our last review... Was Tom? Uh, oh, actually, I don't know if we've read that one out. Go on. We got one from Lee. Have I read this on the podcast before? I think we did, but read it again. Let's just refresh everyone. It was from how September good 17th, sound. 2017. Yeah, we definitely read it out, I remember, but... Right, uh, read it again. Five, five out of five. It's good. It's a good start. Yeah, good, good start. The title is Biggest Fan. Uh, These two constantly crack me up. How I found them, I have no idea, but they're always at the top of my recommended list. Recommended for morning drives and chilling out playing games. There you go. Now, it's quite quite fitting, really, that Lee's been mentioned in this episode, Liam, because, as as listeners will know, there was a, there was a, a period of time where Liam wouldn't let Lee live down the fact that we had all sat down to record a three hour episode and it had gone sort of wrong when Lee, Lee's audio broke. So it's sort of fitting that on the episode where Liam's audio broke and we lost an hour of episode, Lee was mentioned. So I just want you to know, Lee, you're forgiven because L- Liam no longer has a leg to stand on. Culture swap. Swap my culture. What did we do this week? Oh, Liam, we read Spider-Gwen, Most Wanted, Volume Zero. I said that in a weird order. Spider-Gwen, Volume Zero, Most Wanted. Most Wanted? Question mark. There we go. Um, Thank you. Basically, in a nutshell, I didn't really like it, Ellie did. There we go. Moving on. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> what? Liam's a shit, listeners. Because this he lost... It's his fault this audio doesn't <laughs> exist, and now he's going to be all moody about re-recording his thoughts. No, I, I'm happy to record my thoughts. Let's start. Um, okay, I can pretty much go over our exact discussions. Here we go. I did a big oh, bad God. thing, because instead of reading a collected graphic volume... I, Instead of reading the thing we said we'd read. I bought it digitally because I'm in the future now and that's what we do. And um, my sort of bundle collection that I bought was like technically it was the volume, but it was the five single mm. issues bundled together and sold as a volume, which meant that they get things like the letters page and the previously on page. And I really like this stuff, but Don't Ellie pretend. doesn't. Don't pretend like that. That's No, 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 no. You're trying to make it sound like you're like, oh, yeah, well, I bought them as issues because I just really enjoy the extra content. You I know, it was them. an accident. Uh, no, Liam bought it because he wanted to buy a, 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 a like anthology of Spider-Man comics. I've got so many It just many so Spider-Man happened comics. that Spider-Gwen was in it. I think I have like over 50 Spider-Man comics. It's ridiculous. I yeah. get carried away with these bundle things. Yes. 
Um, but no, I, I really liked um, the previously on page. I wish that The Walking Dead did it. It's the only other comic that I read single issues of. Um, yeah. I I don't mind a letters page. Uh, this is something that I mentioned. Um, Kat used to read Kill or Be Killed, which we've covered in a previous culture swap. Yeah. Um, she used to read the single issues of that, and the writer used to have like a little column at the end where he'd talk about the media that he was like reading or, or watching that kind of influenced how he was feeling or you know influenced that issue in some way so maybe not like a direct influence but it could just be like oh i was watching a lot of this and it was playing on my mind when i was writing this panel i like that sort of thing i think that's cool i wish that collective volumes included that kind of information which we also discussed and i said that at the end they normally have variant covers and in between the variant covers would be a perfect place to slot this sort of thing yeah i don't think they should i'm fine with them not doing it but like why would you not want additional content that you can ignore if you want to it doesn't make sense i, di- I didn't say i don't want it i just said i don't care yeah, but, oh, he's weird so I, I don't care well, exactly you should it's, care i don't who wrote spider gwen don't know you looked it up last time tell me i can remember that it was jason latour who also wrote southern bastards which we've also recorded in a, a, a previous culture swap on yeah, yeah, we have. I think we both enjoyed it. Yeah, there's a, a new volume that's out um, that I bought the other week, but I haven't read it yet. Volume 4, I believe. So expect that on a future housekeeping. Fair enough. Robbie Rodriguez uh, listen, is the artist. Oh, sorry. Go on, no, what were you going to say? No, no, you keep reading. Uh, Rico Renzi is the colour artist. you got VC's Clayton Cows as the letterer. That's what you need to know, really, isn't it? Yeah, fair enough. Uh, listeners, this next part of the podcast is going to have spoilers and stuff for Spider Gwen Volume Zero. So if you want to go read it, turn this off and then come back later after you've read it. Cool. Bye. Uh, so yeah, we should do a quick summary of what Spider Gwen Volume Zero is about, Liam. Which is okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Why did you say it like that? That was fucking weird. Um, <laughs> it's basically we. It starts with Gwen Stacy after she's already gained her spider powers. Yeah. Uh. It follows Gwen as the police are hunting her down because they think she's involved in the death of Peter Parker. Who isn't Spider-Man. No, he is the lizard in this universe. Or so we think. he's dead. Yeah, well, he's the lizard equivalent. Yeah. He maybe isn't called Lizard. He might have been called something else. The police think Spider-Gwen was involved in it. Yeah. Gwen Stacy's dad is leading the hunt for for Spider-Gwen. Yeah. But, well, Spider-Woman. Yeah, what do they... they, do they call her Spider Woman? Yeah, because obviously, if, but if, no, but do they actually call her Spider Woman? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What do you think they call her? I don't remember them calling her anything. Yeah, yeah, no. So, uh, like the like the billboards and stuff around town that they put up are all like, "Have you seen Spider Woman?" Okay. Anyway, uh, Kingpin and Matt Murdock, who is Kingpin's lawyer, yeah, uh, working together. Sort of, they're hiring criminals to go and do shit that. I don't, they're trying to like kill the police chief and also get Spider Gwen on their side somehow. I don't know how they think that'll work. Yeah, it's not clarified really. Uh, and Spider Gwen's also in a band with Mary Jane. Oh, I hated that storyline so much. Yeah, I know. It felt like they I were trying to like um, rip off Riverdale, to be honest. In some, oh yeah, that's specs. definitely what it was. Yeah, hundred percent. Because Spider Gwen didn't come out before Riverdale. I don't think it did. No, Archie has been around since nineteen. Yes, so you something. should have. So what you should have said there, Liam, was um, it was ripping off. Archie oh, okay, it's ripping off Archie. Riverdale comics. is a TV show on Netflix, based which on was definitely made after Archie Spider Gwen. Right. I don't think it was. I think that's a stupid thing for you to say. But okay, we don't know this. I mean, so uh, but is your argument then that any time there is a band in a no, comic it was just book a terrible or... band. It was so bad. Is the band in Archie bad? What? Yeah, well, no. Is, you is that, like, sorry, you it, said it was... Let me clarify, Lim. You said it was ripping off Archie. I said, does that mean that every time there's a band in media, they're ripping off Archie? You said, no, it's a terrible band, yeah, which yeah. would imply that the band in Archie is a terrible band. So, so okay. I'm just trying to clarify what your point Here is. Here are the similarities. They're teenagers in high school with stupid names in a band. Much like in, in, in Archie, you've got um, Josie and the Pussycats. I would be Yeah, surprised. which I think they mentioned... If... In Spider Gwen, they they mentioned Josie and the Pussycats. Exactly. So that's why they're ripping them off. Boom. It's not a rip off. Oh my oh, god! Homage. Shut, shut the fuck up! You lost an hour of content. It's not a rip off. Would you prefer to call it a homage? Yes. Sure. It's a homage. You can call it that, and I'll call it. Anyway, a I really like Spider Gwen. I think it's a really good graphic novel. I think it's 
interesting. It's a good take on Spider Man where you don't have to rewatch the same Spider Man story re-read. over and over again. Huh? Reread. You were saying this a lot yesterday and I never corrected it and I wish I, I had. I say watch a lot when I'm when I'm talking about reading stuff, I say watch. That's weird. Because I visualise it all in my head. But it's drawn for you. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Still weird. I think it's a good graphic novel. Yeah. You don't have to read Peter Parker's origin all over again because yeah. you're dealing with Gwen Stacy and she's clearly got a different origin. Yeah, I, I think I the I think they have interesting takes origin. on all the villains from Spider Man and these alternate universe versions of them. Nah, uh, listeners, let me just very quickly tell you what Liam's going to say. I didn't understand this graphic novel. It was too confusing. Why was <laughs> Why was Matt Murdock Kingpin's lawyer? It makes no sense. Then I say, well, Liam, it's set in a different dimension. Oh, but I did. It feels like I had to read so much backstory. No, and I say, well, no, Liam, they haven't got a backstory for it. It's a different dimension. You just yeah, I, it's just meant to. You know, you're meant to pick up on these things. They sort of yeah, say I, it without saying it. It's kind of nuanced. Yeah, I, and then Liam I'm goes. No, I it. just don't understand. I understand it all perfectly. So what we've got here, right, is this was leading into this big event called uh, the Spider Verse, Edge of Spider, Edge of Spider Verse, as something awful was happening, which would require all of the different spider things to. Yep, that's what they are. Get involved, right? So you've yep. got like Miles Morales. He's one, obviously Peter Parker, um, others. It's a lot of Peter Parkers, if yeah. I remember right. Yeah, you know, all of these different. <laughs> Iterations, iter- iterations, 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 yeah. all joined forces, and the, the very first issue of Spider Gwen sees a Spider Man looking at her, being like, "Oh yeah, oh, you'll do. You're a bit tasty." That's uh, not what he says, but okay. He says something like, "You'll do." Yeah, yeah. He doesn't throw in the "you're tasty" bit. So it was uh, nuanced, um, <laughs> and so. That basically means that this is a completely different universe, unrelated to all of the other Spider-Man ones, except yeah. it has all the same villains, but they have different relationships in this one. And, and I think some of them are different people. Yeah. Well, well what do you mean? Well, I, I, I think that the Vulture's a different character. It was Tombs in the um Oh, Spider-Man was he still movie. Tombs in this? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the fact that Peter Parker is Lizard is different. Yeah, sure. Um, you've got Frank Castle in it. Who's like a, yep. a detective? A policeman. Um, they haven't really like dived into his backstory yet, but he's got issues, obviously. Like they could be the same issues, we just don't know yet because they haven't. Really I think told they are because they have the scene where her dad's talking to Frank Castles and says, "I've got a daughter," and Frank's looking at a picture of his daughter and then sort of gets angry. Yeah. And I think in the original, that's the story of how Punisher becomes the Punisher. Yeah. Um, yeah, like it's it's very nuanced. And there's, there's a lot of... Um, I regret saying nuanced earlier, because now you're just repeating it endlessly. <laughs> there's a lot of, like, huge gaps in the backstory that, for someone like Ellie, they're like, oh, this is brilliant. For someone like me, I'm just like, oh, just fill what? it in. Well, no, no, give an, give an example, because I, I genuinely don't know if I know what you're saying. Like, how Matt Murdock got working with Kingpin. Yeah. Things like that that I would like to know. Yeah, but... and that probably will get dealt with in later volumes. Yeah, maybe, but it's not here. It's annoying. Right, but that's... It's annoying. This is what I was saying, though. Right? I I don't like that they're using all of these characters that we already have familiarity with, but they're using them differently. Just use new characters because it, no, because that defeats the, no, 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 no. That defeats the point of what the Gwen Stacy universe is. Yeah. The Gwen Stacy universe is a universe where Gwen Stacy became got the spider powers instead of Peter Parker, right? Yeah. So it's that it's like the butterfly effect. It's like. A universe where some some minor differences have happened, yeah. and people have fallen on different sides of the like good guy bad guy line. It would have been shit. Like how shit would it be if they went over there and they were like, "Oh my god, it's like Gwen Stacy is Spider Man's first girlfriend who dies in the main universe." Yeah, right. It, how shit would it have been for the? So that's just we haven't read Edge of Spider Verse. No, but imagine that universe where there's a Peter Parker who travels to a different dimension to get all these Spider Men together, and in one of those universes he finds. Gwen Stacy as Spider-Man yeah. instead of him, right? <laughs> yeah. That's meaningful because it's like, oh shit, that's the Gwen that we watched die. Yeah. Right? If the universe was completely different, that's not really their Gwen Stacy anymore because they'd turn up at the universe and go, oh my God, it's Gwen Stacy. And then she'd say some shit and they'd be like, no, no, that's really not her at all. Right, and but... the Peter Parker would be like, is there a Peter Parker in this universe? And she'd be like, no, no, you no, I've got about... a Ryan, you... Ryan Bagara. Okay, you talk about butterfly effects, right? Yeah. But... What was 
the butterfly effect. I'm not saying there was one small difference. I'm saying it's yeah, like it's the stupid. butterfly effect where there are differences. Yeah, like, it's, it's going to be something you either like or you don't like. Like This is very, very superhero-y and a part of it being very superhero-y is that it trades on a assumed knowledge of these characters. Like, if you'd never watched any of this stuff, if you never read any of it, yeah, like you'd be reading this, and I think it would be quite disorientating. I don't... No, it's, I don't It's think fine it... for us, because we know who things like Matt Murdock are. And... Yeah, but you don't need to know who he is. But how weird would it be if you're reading it and you were like, why is there a blind lawyer who's... Hanging around. Yeah, that's and sorry. Into sorry. Things. Whoa, whoa. Let's just let's just quickly hit pause on this conversation and let me just play back to you what you just said, and I'll just see if you can figure out how bad what you said was, Liam. Because yeah. you just said, how weird would it be if there was a blind lawyer? Yeah. Right. Yeah. As if as if the idea that when you're watching any form of media and there's a new character introduced and someone goes, oh, uh, by the way, Steve's blind. You just go, what? This yeah. what this no, whole show's falling okay. apart for me. You're, you're this missing, show, well, how did he go blind? You're missing this the is ridiculous. Next bit that I said, Why though? won't they explain to me how Steve got blind? And he's getting involved in all of this like kung fu weird stuff. Yeah, right at the end of five issues. So you've already had issues where you're establishing that Matt Murdock is Kingpin's yeah. under under yeah, yeah. underling. The only character that I could see your argument for would be Kingpin. That's the only one. Why? Because they don't necessarily specify that he's about him being like this big. We know that he's a big crime boss. Yeah, yeah from the main universe. Yeah. And I, I think they mentioned that he's a criminal, but I don't know whether they're like, he runs an empire of criminals. I hate the Chat Noir stuff. F- fine. Stupid. It's an, it's an opposing band, or woman, singer, and she has these cats that play instruments and are also ninjas, if I'm following it right. Uh, yeah. I mean, that that's all I should need to say, really, for someone to be like, that sounds like my sort of thing, or for someone to be like, I'm not a fan of that. No, that was r- ridiculous to base your entire assumption on one thing that happens in the fifth issue. If someone turned around to me and said, there's cats that play instruments and they're also ninjas, I'd be like, I don't need to read that. If someone turned around to me and said, there's a comic book where a man gets angry and then turns into a green monster, I'd be like, well, that's ridiculous. Is there any backstory? And they go, yeah, he got hit by gamma rays. I'd be like, that sounds like a shit comic. There but unfortunately, Liam, if you base your assumption on these little things, you miss out on good stuff like Planet Hulk and World War Hulk. Ah, oh, but I haven't missed out on anything good with spider There's a man who got bitten by a spider. Oh, what did he do? Oh, he, he, he built web shooters and climbs around on walls. Oh, that sounds fucking wonderful. Can't Which, wait to read that. That's something else that isn't established in this, is it? How do web shooters work? Oh, they don't show them. No. So we don't no. know if she's built them or if it's like the, the movies where it's like a natural byproduct. We don't know. Which I, I almost prefer that. It, to me, I, I get that the whole building the web shooters is to emphasise Peter Parker's smarts, but it just makes more sense that it's a natural I mean, it definitely, makes, it definitely makes less sense because spiders don't shoot webs out of their feet, but I do get what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just think, I think maybe saying it makes more sense was the wrong choice of words, but I maybe. do understand what you mean. Where's a, there's a pig in a spider costume. Liam doesn't like spider ham. I don't like Spider Ham. Apparently, it's in the Edge of Spider Verse. I, 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 uh, it's in this as, as a figment of her imagination or something. Yeah. Fucking hell. I mean, so we. I think we sp- said this yesterday, and my my argument for why Spider Ham is the thing she she imagines. Basically, Gwen Stacy wakes up after getting a concussion by like. Toxic gas, Managing isn't it, from Vulture? No, no, no. She gets she gets gassed, and then she's trying to get away from Vulture. Uh, he lifts her into the air, drops her, and she manages to sort of swing her way onto a garbage ship yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. smashes her smashes herself up. Yeah. So she's got a concussion, and then hallucinates Spider Ham helping her and trying to get her to deal with the fact that she's got her own life apart from being Spider Gwen. Uh, the reason I say it's spy- it makes sense that it's Spider Ham, whilst it is ridiculous that it is a pig that wears the Spider Man suit. Yeah. Which is ridiculous. It is, yeah. It makes sense in the t- fact that in this universe, Gwen Stacy, even though she didn't kill Peter Parker, she feels responsible for the death of him. Talks about how, like, she feels like it was her fault because he idolized the Spider Woman of this universe yeah. and wanted to become a hero and then killed himself by becoming Lizard. Yeah. From what we see. Yeah. So she can't imagine that the only people she knows that could help theoretically with being Spider-Man are other Spider-Men because she knows there's a universe of all these other Spider-Men out there. Yeah, isn't there... There's, 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 there's a whole storyline where Doc Ock becomes Spider-Man for a while, isn't there? Probably. I think Probably. so, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay, anyway. So there's all these other Spider-Men but they are all Peter Parker. No, so not all of them. 
Miles just Morales. Miles Morales. Yeah, there's, was, he there's probably, was he in the Edge of Spider Verse? We don't know. We haven't read it. But right, this, so that's this what I'm saying. I'm pretty positive. Say. So I think that they are all Peter Parkers. If I, I I've not read Edge of Spider Verse, but I'm pretty positive most, of, if not all, most of them are probably him. Okay. So what I'm saying, Liam, oh, I mean, she clearly they're not all him because you've got Gwen Stacy. Oh Stacey my god, Liam, shut the fuck up. Hey, Liam, shut the fuck up. They're not all him. I'm making a point. Finish your point. Anyway, it's thank you. So she's not gonna fa- she's not gonna imagine one of the Peter Parker Spider Men helping her. No, because she already blames herself for the death of Peter Parker. That wouldn't help her. Yeah. So she goes to the one that she knows that isn't Sp- Peter Parker, which is Spider Ham, the talking Spider Pig. So okay, so first thing... Miles Morales is a teenager. She probably wouldn't fantasize a young child helping her either. So first thing, we know they're not all Peter Parkers. Otherwise, what's Gwen Stacy and Spider Ham doing there? Yep, I think they are the two that aren't Spider- Peter Parker. I would be surprised if Miles Morales isn't there as well. Then. Well, that's. I've got a solution for this, Liam. Just look it up. Yeah, let's play. Let's play. Let's Google the Spider Edge of Spider Verse. Edge and of Spider Verse. And this is the Spider-verse. other thing, right? It could be that in Edge of Spider Verse, like Miles, Spider Gwen and Spider Ham have like a significant running together, which could be why she's fantasizing about him. But again, it plays into this issue I have where. It requires you to do, like, tertiary, tertiary, tertiary reading. No, 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 no. Sorry, no, it doesn't. We're only doing tertiary reading because you're being a dick about it. No, no, it, you wouldn't it, have to do this. If I think if you, mm, I think it. it mm, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, Liam. When a when a pig turns up wearing a spider suit, I don't think anyone at home's going. I don't understand his gimmick. I, I don't understand why he's in Spider Gwen though. Because she's hallucinating. It's like you have some of the most stupid arguments, Liam. What's the answer? Like, I don't understand why this is the point you're making a stand on. Like, honestly, if I were going to try and shoot down Spider Gwen, the point I wouldn't make a stand on is the bit where she hallucinates another character. Because I'd be like, yeah, to be fair, people hallucinate weird shit. Is he in Spider Verse? I'm still Googling. There's Spider Man, Superior Spider Man, which is Peter Parker. Yeah, he is. There's... He's the Ultimate Spider Man, which is Miles Morales. Yeah, There's... is he in the Edge of Spider Verse? Well, it says he's in Spider Verse. Right. Well, Spider Verse, Liam, is the the Spider Man universe, as in all the Marvel comics for Spider Man. So yes, he's in the Spider Verse. Is he in the Edge of Spider Verse? No, this says it was a 2014 comic book storyline that features multiple <sighs> alternative versions of Spider Man, all under attack by Morlan and his family. Yeah, and a five issue run of one shots, all under the Edge of Spider Verse banner. So this is the right thing that I'm looking at that has Miles Morales and Jessica Drew and May May Day Parker. Apparently there's a spider girl where Aunt May becomes Spider-Man. I think I've seen that. She becomes like... Uh, I know that in the main one she was like Grandma Silk or something for a while. Okay. And Anya anyway, Corazon. Don't know who that is. Anyway, Liam, it's a fucking hallucination of a pig. It shouldn't be your main argument against Spider-Gwen. That's not my main argument. My main argument what it fucking is seems that like I didn't it. like it. That's fine. You don't have to like it, but ju- I don't understand why was, this is the point you're arguing. On. It was so I haven't read a lot of like superhero comics. We've done uh, Superman, whatever happened to the Man of Tomorrow. Um, yeah, we haven't done any other superhero comics on the podcast. No, I don't think so. Nah, I've read in my own like time um, Suicide Squad, like a, a couple of volumes of that. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of it, really. I don't read a lot of the superhero stuff. And it's the thing that's always put me off of getting into it is this um, this feeling that there's just... Where do you start? Like, there's so much history to it. And, yeah. you know, starting at, like, I don't know, whatever volume is the first appearance of whatever character you want to read is going to get well expensive. Yeah, which no one would do. No, exactly. That's a, that, that's a bad way to do yeah, reading yeah. a superhero. That's always what I felt is, like, my barrier of entry... Like, I, I don't mind I've read like Batman Year Zero which is a standalone yeah it's all contained in this story I'm happy with that it's the other things like this where they just they start draw or maybe not drawing in but other yeah, things that are happening do have like a ripple effect to this because she comes back I from mean, the Spider-Verse but... thing and she's, they're all like oh where have you been for three days and she's like on a different planet and shit yeah, but this this does exactly. She doesn't say on a different planet and shit. At one point, but she this does exactly how, planet. like, especially something like Spider Gwen, which is standalone. I'm just gonna ignore you when you try and argue against this because you're wrong. This is a standalone comic in the fact that it's set in an alternate universe to the main one. There isn't. You can't go and read 
Vulture Volume 1 Spider-Gwen universe because that's not a thing. Like, you can't go and do that. There's not yeah. a ba- there's not a backstory you're missing because there isn't other com- there aren't other comic books of, tying into no, Spider Gwen. There are. Listen, no, listen. You shut your mouth. There are. Other you things. lost an hour recording. There are Stop other it. Things. No. So the bit that it spins off into is Edge of Spider Verse, right? And the whatever happens in the Spider Verse stuff, it then comes back into it, and that then has no impact on the main storyline. There's the only impact it has is that she was missing for a few days, and. That gets brought up maybe once or twice. Yeah. So for you to be like saying, well, it's just I can't get into this because there is so much other stuff that I'd have to read to get into it. That's ridiculous. There isn't. Right. Okay. You're forgetting a fundamental thing here. That you're a broken human being. And in your head, the moment you see Matt Murdock, you're like, well, I've got to go read the entirety of Dead (laughs) Daredevil just so I can understand what this what's different about this universe. If you were broken like me. Genuine, yes. genuinely, and you wanted to be like, oh, this is a continuation of something else, and where but, does which that it end? We don't know. But yeah, well, no, because you would read the the very first volume, and the first thing, like the, the last thing you see in that volume, is another Spider Man being like, oh, yeah, you'll do. No, sorry, you're saying issue. You mean issue? issue. Yeah, this yeah, is the yeah, mistake. Yeah, this issue. is the mistake you made, Liam, where you yeah. accidentally read issue zero and thought yeah, that yeah. was an entire volume. But yeah. So then, like, if you were like me, you'd look at it and you go, well, where did he come from? I've got to go and figure that out, and it just spirals so quickly that it's. Off putting, but that's that's just predi- like <sighs> because genuinely, like you, you you don't have to do this. But if you wanted the full Spider Gwen story, you would have to read her parts of Spider Verse as well. No, no, that's a f- no, that's ridiculous. Is that's she your, in Spider Verse? You just explained. You just explained how you were broken for thinking that, yeah. and then tried to make it sound like what you're saying is the reasonable thing. Remember, Liam. You're the broken one. Yeah, That's yeah. not the reasonable thing. But if you wanted... There are people that went, would have gone and read Edge of Spider-Verse there we go. and got the story, but you don't need it to do well, for Spider-Man. Well, we don't know that. You don't. We do know that because that was literally after issue zero and then we read five other issues of Spider-Gwen and it didn't tie into Where it. Where Spider-Ham popped up and for all we know, they could have been best buds in Spider-Verse and had an adventure together and then we'd be like, oh, it makes it sense wasn't why Spider-Ham Spider-Ham, popped It wasn't real Spider-Ham, it was hallucination, up. so you don't need to know that. It might have helped make more sense though. Can you no, not it at wouldn't least have. A- a- He's a talking that. pig with spider powers, Liam. It wouldn't have made more sense. So if in Spider-Verse, Spider-Gwen and Spider-Ham had an adventure together, you don't yeah. think it's more justifiable for Spider-Ham to be the, the hallucination she has in this? That's not what I'm saying at all. You're strawmanning my argument completely there. But I'm, I'm erecting your own argument I'm to argue. I'm saying my argument is, but you seem to not be understanding it. No, no, no. I get what you're saying it's... is that you, you when you get to other characters and things that to spin off, your brain is like, I have to go read all that. Yeah. The bit I don't understand is when you start using that to argue against properties because that's such a ridiculous flaw. Wait, argue that's against like, what? That's what? What argue against what? I didn't hear the word you said. You're like you're, you're so anti Spider Gwen. Yeah. And you use this, you use your broken thing yeah. to be like, I don't like Spider Gwen because I'm broken. Yes. And that, to me, is just shit argument. You can't argue that something's yeah. bad because you have a problem. But Yeah, I can. No, that's like you being like, I hate the DVD industry because I own 1,101 DVDs I haven't watched. How can they keep doing this to me? But that's You know that's your problem. You can't use it, it right. against the property. If I have a problem with something, I can't be like, I like it. No, that's true. You can still say you don't like this. There we go. I just don't think you can sit there and be like... Yeah loudly and interrupting my points but going oh it's stupid it's so complicated because <laughs> you're making a you like, everyone knows you don't like this so yeah shut the fuck up and let me talk about why i like this thing instead of sitting Go there on. and complaining about Go it why do you the like entire it? hour uh it gives you a strong female superhero i like that who follows her own storyline doesn't it doesn't rip off the peter parker storylines no and one of the points that i liked that i made yesterday she doesn't currently have a love interest Yep, which is good. I think she probably will get one, but I like but that it's not a it crutch be? they're using for the beginning. Who would it be? I mean, there's plenty Spider of men Han. that exist in the Spider-Man universe. Could, yeah, yeah, hopefully Spider-Man. It could Han. be Matt Murdock. could be Norman Osborn. It could be... Who knows? I don't think it's going to be Matt Murdock, but yeah. yeah. Uh, I like the fact that you get to see these alternate universe uh, characters who are characters that are put in different positions to where they are in the main universe. I but, think that's interesting. Can I just say, like, surely... Oh, oh, just... Uh, listeners, Surely, what, right. what was that, what's that sound? What? Wait, whoa, whoa, just everyone listen up real carefully. After me telling Liam that I think it's really annoying when he interrupts me when I'm just trying to talk about why I like something. Yeah. Did did Liam just yeah. 
I think he did. Then, yeah. He just interrupted me. This. Go on, Liam, what's your point? Surely, right? I'm enjoying seeing these alternate universe takes, that enjoyment has to come from knowing what their other universe takes are. I'm going to let you in on a secret, Liam. I've never read a Punisher graphic novel or comic. Okay. But you still know that character's story. Uh, vaguely, yeah. yeah. I've got the vague thing of it. I know that he's a guy who kills baddies. Yeah, like if, if, if they did like Punisher in this and he was, I don't know, a veterinarian. Yeah. You'd be like, that's a different take on Punisher. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you have enough of an understanding to know when they've changed something fundamental about him. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Right. So okay, if you cool. didn't have let me just, that Let me just counter argue that. The the first uh, villain that they send out to attack uh, Gwen Stacy's dad, yeah, is a hero that or a villain that neither of us know. Alexi, I think he is definitely a hundred percent a reference to a character from the Spider Man comics, but we don't know him. No, I don't know. That didn't impact my enjoyment of that. No, but it might. No, I'm not saying it was going to impact. I'm saying part of what you do enjoy, why that enjoyment is enhanced, is because about one about yeah one of my points. I think the main the main reason I like Spider Gwen is because Spider Gwen is cool as shit. Yeah. No, it's because she's cool as shit, not because she's a lady. (laughs) I'm not like you, Liam. My brain works on more than just this person's a woman. I don't like this franchise. Main thing was like, oh, it's a female superhero that's cool. No, that was one of the reasons I gave for liking Spider Gwen. I thought it was like your first reason. Which I then assumed it was, was the first name. one I said. Yeah. It's one of my. I don't order things like you. I'm not obsessive like you. I don't have to have everything ordered. Yeah, that's true. Anyway, can, what else do you like? I don't know, mate. Uh, it's weird because someone interrupted <laughs> me in the middle of my list of things I like about Spider Gwen. That was me. Yeah, it was you. <laughs> it was, buddy. And you lost a fucking hour of this recording. Whatever. Spider Gwen gets a 4.5 out of 5 from me. That's Fuck really the interview. No one gives a shit. I don't give a shit. That's really No one high. cares what you rate it. What are we doing next time? That's No, that's really high. Um, there were things that I liked about it. I don't care. I think you do. And if you list them, List them in order of importance. Okay. Uh, I like that she was a woman. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, what did I like? I liked her costume. Did you steal that from me? Because I said that yesterday. Yeah. You dick. Yeah. Well, you know, I thought you were done with your your. You points. interrupted me so that I would forget all my points, and then you're <laughs> stealing the other points I had yesterday. Yeah. Um, no, I, I did like her costume. It's a cool costume. It's like white it is and a cool pink costume. with a bit of black and a bit of blue. Mm-hmm. Um, I do like that they've they've done a good job, I think, of giving her like a teenage voice, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I'm not a. Sh- well, no. What one of the things that I do like is how quickly they've done the whole revealing who she is to her dad because that that's a trope that i think i've just seen it in movies and stuff so many times i'm just sick of it where it's like oh, i've got this secret identity but i can't tell anyone because it's gonna put them in yeah, danger yeah. it's it's just so overdone so yeah. i like that they kind of have sidestepped that issue or just full-on addressed it i guess yep yeah. um but that was it really i i, I thought it was going okay it i I didn't mind like the first like, like issue zero or whatever where it's just establishing her and then they bring her back in the Spider Verse. I didn't mind it, but I truly detested the last issue. I can see why. It's definitely one of the weirder ones. Yeah, and to me, it's it's a it's a weird place to end the the volume as well. I, it almost to me would have made more sense to end it an issue sooner because this feels like this this issue feels like the start of it, the next storyline almost. Yeah, but then I guess that's part of like to you getting in. you to want to read more. Maybe Did that complete fail on that on that front. It... Yeah, well, it's a it's a female led franchise, so yeah. you you were never going to read more. No, not a chance. Um, I do like some female led franchises. You like your sexy comics? I love my sexy comics. A lot of them have females in them. There's loads, loads. Um, you like Twilight? That's female led, sort of. Yeah, Hunger Games. I like. That's female. Look at you. You're so progressive. Yeah. I'm trying to think of others. The thing is, it's not that I don't like them because they're not female-led. It's I'm literally just trying to think of things that are female-led. Feels like there's not enough. Yeah, that's why I like one of the good things about Spider Gwen is that she's a good female lead in the fact that she's not the stereotypical female lead. Where it's like, I don't know, she she doesn't feel like a Wonder Woman clone. No, she's very different. Which is like the whole like oh we've not done female leads, so let's do a powerful female lead by making her a strong warrior. Yeah. Like, Spider Gwen very much feels like a teenage girl who's trying to deal with the fact that she has spider powers. 
I would say she feels like a teenager that's trying to deal with the spider powers, but I don't necessarily think what I've seen so far of what she's dealing with as particularly feminine issues. If yes, that makes sense. No, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why it's good, because the bullshit part of it is when a bunch of dudes sit down and go, how do we make a female lead? And they're like, oh, she's going to be do, worried what about What do women makeup. deal with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So the fact that she's a teenager dealing with teenager problems and the fact that she's a girl isn't the fucking De- issue. Like defining her in any way. Yeah. Yeah, which That's is why partly good, why, I, I well, like, like I said, like I'd like that there wasn't a love interest. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So that's another thing that those things fall into. So I like think we're sort of agreeing on that point. We are, yeah. Yeah, two out of five. Too, too low. I nearly said too slow. <laughs> I would not need more. Um, you are too slow mentally, but that's not the point. Uh, what are we doing next time, Liam? Next time, speaking of females, bringing it all together. Very good, Liam. We are going to watch some glamorous ladies of wrestling. Uh, Liam, can I drop a, drop a fact bomb on you? Yes. Uh, in the last 22 hours. Yeah. I have watched six episodes of this season. That's a lot. Yeah, I uh, I got really into it. So uh, everyone, everyone, get ready for that review. I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I'm like the reason why we're doing this is because I wanted to watch season one. I just never got around to it. And yeah. season two came out recently-ish in the last like month or so. Yeah. And again, I just saw loads of people kind of raving about it, and I was like, "This is let's let's watch this." Um, it's got women in it, so Liam's probably not going to enjoy it that much. But oh, but it? it does have... Um, oh, what's her face in it? Oh, God. What's her face from Community? She plays Annie. Oh, yeah, yeah I know who you mean. I'm blanking on her name, though, because I'm getting old. Oh, what is it? Alison Brie. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the one. She's like the main character in it, as far as I can understand. Oh, at least that's what the, the promotional material makes it look like. Yeah. Um... So yeah, I'm really excited to watch this. Um, it's, is it ten episodes in season one? Uh, yeah, ten. And like half an hour each? Yep. Um, when you finish season one, because you're obviously going to finish it really quickly. Yeah, I'm going to finish it probably tomorrow. And then you're going to obviously have to wait until we record before you can watch season two. Yep. So you're going to need something to fill this gap, right? I mean, no, because we're... I don't know if you're aware, Liam, but we're already over a week late with this episode. Yeah. We... Th- the, at this exact moment in time, yeah, listeners, we are recording at nine o'clock on a Monday. Yeah, at this exact moment in time, we should be recording the glow episode yeah. of Nerd on Nerd. So, so no, Liam, I'm not going to try and fill my time with other stuff because we're already so behind. But you should. That I don't think there'll be time. I think you. Like the moment you finish episode ten of Glow, yeah, I'm going to be saying That's we important. need to record yeah, this yeah, episode yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. But all I'm saying is, please watch Everything Sucks. How long is it? Um, I think it's. Let me just double check. It's it's the same way. Like the episodes are half an hour, if that. It's the reason why I'm recommending it is because it sounds like you've massively binged this by doing six episodes in one night. And I did the same thing with Everything Sucks. So while you're waiting for me to watch, yeah, it's ten episodes and they're thirty minutes. So it's exactly the same as Glow. Yeah. So maybe while you're waiting for me to watch season one of Glow, because you know I'm I might binge it, but we'll see. You should try, because yeah, yeah, we yeah, need yeah. to get this recorded as soon as possible. Yeah, but, but while you're waiting, because I, I really want to hear your thoughts and everything, so really badly. Okay. Uh, that's it then. If you want to get in contact with us, you can oh, email yeah. us at nerdonnerdpod at gmail.com, or you can tweet us at nerdonnerdpod. No, just at nerdonnerd. At nerdonnerd. Why did, I, I, I do this so often, and then immediately Yeah, but we haven't done it for like you a month. Can, that's true. You can Facebook us at facebook.com forward slash nerdonnerdpod, all one word. You can review us on iTunes and give us a five-star rating, please. That's what Lee did. We'll read it out. That's what Lee did. Be cool like Lee. Yeah. The cool Don't people be a Liam. are the ones be that fuck Lee. up their audacity, I guess. That's definitely how it works. Yeah. Uh, uh, what else do we tell people to do? Like, uh, YouTube. You go to YouTube. Uh, when... Yeah, if you want to go back in time. If you want to be like... If you want to do a butterfly effect yeah. and see what Nerd on Nerd could have been like if it was all on YouTube and also in the past, go to YouTube. If you want to be like, oh, I wonder who else used to listen to Nerd on Nerd but now doesn't, go listen to some of the old housekeepings that are now on YouTube. There's some Joanna? names on there that I don't recognise. Uh, yeah, there's Joanna. Um, Gibbs, does he still listen to us? Gibbo. Gibbsy? Gibbo. Gibbo. Nah, he, he ended a long time ago. I, I think it's because he used to love your book reviews and you stopped doing them, so he stopped listening. It's because someone gave me uh, American Psycho to read. Someone just won't get through that last 25% of it. 25% is so difficult. Uh, Liam. Yeah. Any final thoughts? 
Um, we need a backup to Audacity. Or a, a replacement of Audacity. If anyone has any recommendations, let us know. Bye! Bye!